Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack, and this is the Bolo Show. That's right, Beyond the Lookout Show. We are covering this week's new comic book day releases, the day after new comic book day. That's where we're covering those first appearances, reader buzz books, and variant buzz books. And then Jack offers that long-term play at the end. Jack, how's your day? Doing well, doing well. You know, new comic book day. I'm always happy on Wednesday. A lot of first appearances and a few legit ones. So there's definitely some stuff to talk about this week. It seems like every week. There's always something, but uh, this week we're first appearance heavy. Yeah, and it's weird because right when we started getting back from COVID, we're like kept saying, man, it's a slow week. It's a slow week. Um, my regular schedule is picked up and the comics have picked up. So sometimes I'm almost wishing it was a slow week again with comics just so I can keep up with reading. But nonetheless, there's some great books and we're going to start right now with those first appearances. Kicking off first appearances this week, we actually have a twofer with Wolverine number six and X-Force number 13. Yeah, we really can't talk about one book without talking about the other because they're both being talked about for the same reason. And that's, of course, a cameo appearance of Solemn, a potential upcoming Wolverine villain who's made of animantium metal. Um, certainly, when you start talking animantium, you're going to naturally have that Wolverine um, kind of tie-in. He cameo appears in Wolverine number six. He's featured uh, a bit on the cover of X-Force 13. I, I gotta say, I tend to be skeptical a lot of times of new characters coming into the market. It's, it's kind of a cash grab thing that publishers are doing. They throw out a lot of new characters and they see what sticks. Brian and I tend to be kind of a prove it to me um, kind of guys. We were like that with Punchline. It doesn't matter that it, how big the character is hyped to be we tend to want that proof first but i gotta say ryan I'm, I'm kind of on board with this one right off the bat because it seems like the market was on board with this from the get-go they bought both of these books um most covers are sold out at large retailers small retailers um, these are books being grabbed up so i would say if you can find either of these books for cover price they are good pickups right now yeah, plus I'm gone. I'm well past the point in my collection where I buy like bulk copies of stuff. So always bring up that price of price of a lottery ticket, pick up a couple, and if it pans out, pans out. If not, you're not out of anything. But the next one we're talking about the first appearance is Jack's favorite first appearance. We got a new team and champions number one. Yes, now this is true, and we are going to talk about this book a little bit later in the show, but. One of the reasons I actually like this book, and I'm glad we're talking about it specifically for this first appearance, is this first appearance. Um, I'm not a big team fan, and then that's something I'm very, very much on record talking about. Um, but if you're going to have a team within a, a book, part of why I don't like teams is they tend to be thrown together. Um, they tend to be individual entities put together uh, for really no reason. What I like about this team is it's not a team of superheroes. It's a task force of police. Um, and they are in charge of finding these teenage superheroes that have been involved in this outlawed story that's been going on since like the outlawed one shot, all the tie-ins, and now this brand new champion series. Why I think that is important is outlawed has been a big success. It's been both your buzz and sales throughout all of the titles involved. We know that a lot of these properties are coming to fruition in other forms of media via um, Disney Plus, as well as future MCU releases. And there's been a lot of speculation that Outlawed could be the perfect conduit to tell a kind of overarching Young Avengers champions type of story. And if that's the case, Cradle can very well show up. See, this is Brian's so excited. He's yawning for this. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> no, I, I'm just kidding. But, um, but while it's easy to look at this team and go, okay, it's, it's a police force team, right? It's not a superhero. It's not a villain. Um, why would I buy it for cover price? If you go back and look at, at things like uh, S.H.I.E.L.D., um, uh, di different things like um, what was the, uh, the, the damage uh, ink? Control. Was it? Yeah, damage control. Um, the, the way that first appearances of, of these kinds of entities have um, – been very popular in the past i, I think that that let, kind of gives credence to the fact that this first appearance could one day be a 20 25 dollar first appearance and really we're talking about the cover a because there's a lot of other reasons to like this book and we're going to talk about that later but 
you know, as far as that cover A is concerned, if you see that laying around for cover price, if everybody's chasing some of those other covers, I think Cradle is in and of itself an interesting lottery ticket chance, as Brian puts it, um, for the future if they end up going in that outlawed direction, especially if you're already bullish about outlawed. Plus, I mean, Champions just one. I always like those young yep. teen team books, Young Justice, Teen Titans, Champions. They've always been to me more fun to read than some of the, like even like the Avengers or some of those other books. But next one is definitely one of my favorite series to read, and that's that Miles Morales Spider Man. Talking about number nineteen, we got first appearance in here as well, right? Right, yeah, you're getting a brand new first appearance of a clone, Miles. Um, it seems like we've done this kind of before, right? We had the evil Miles. Like Black Noir Miles? No. Yeah, the, it, it's one of those things where it's like, we, we feels like we've seen this. Um, so this one isn't necessarily getting that immediate pop. At the same point, first appearances throughout uh, Miles Morales series, anything really related to Miles Morales, has kind of tended to prove profitable throughout time. So this is already, as far as reader buzz, this is already a series you and I have talked about. We enjoy this one much more than we enjoy the current running uh, Amazing Spider-Man run. Although we're going to talk about it today because I'm glad it's starting to get some reader buzz back. And I do look forward to reading this arc, but I am going to wait till it's finished. But Miles Morales has been consistent just alone for Reader Buzz. But this is another one, Brian, I look at. I put it in the category of I would pick it up for cover price. I would pick up two or three copies and have no issue with that and throw it in a box, uh, take that lottery ticket approach with it because Miles Morales stuff has proven profitable in the future. Um, I, it, this may be a bit redundant, though. Yeah, even without the first appearance, this has been, to me – one of the better Spider-Man series that are out there right now. I've always enjoyed the Miles Morales. Some of the issues, I mean, for the most part of the series kind of, I wouldn't say snuck under the radar because there's been separate single issues that have picked up buzz, but the whole one, all, but the whole series so far has been really good. But we've talked about a lot about Marvel so far. We're going to shift over to DC for a minute and we get the first appearance of Ghostmaker and Batman 100, right? Yeah, there was a lot of rumors that Ghostmaker was going to show up in this um, major Batman issue. And, uh, you know, that whether or not he was going to appear uh, was kind of starting to get debated as new comic book day approached, but we did get that first appearance. Now, I feel like we've gotten a run of first appearances in Batman, and I, I do think they're all important. Um, there's a part of me that wants to be real bullish about Ghostmaker, but at the same point, like I said, you start to see so many, maybe you become desensitized. Here's the great thing about this, Brian. You almost don't have to make those decisions because let's be honest, we're all picking up Joker War. We're all buying into this series. There's two great uh, regular price variants for this book with a Matina variant and a Lieber Mayho variant. You've also got that one in 25 uh, design variant where you get kind of like a new bat suit. Uh, a lot going on going into the uh, next hundred issues in this Batman run. Um, I'm definitely excited uh, to see uh, some of the uh, uh, wild storm characters possibly coming into Gotham city, like we've seen with uh, issue one one So uh, it'll be interesting where, where we're going from here. I hope that they can continue the heat on this Batman run, because I think a, a solid bat kind of like how people say like, you know, the Lakers being good is good for basketball. The Yankees being good is good for baseball because when those major teams are good, either love them or hate them. The only people saying that is Lakers and Yankees fan. No, nah, I don't agree with that because you love it or hate it. you got something to root for or against. Um, and I think Batman being big and in, in, in kind of um, prominent is, is kind of good for comics, whether you're into Batman or not. I don't watch much NBA, but I'm – National League Baseball, and I don't give a shit about what the Yankees do. They can suck ass every year as far as I'm concerned. Best team money can buy. Yeah, and that's exactly your point about how you dislike them is exactly why. You, Everyone needs a villain. Exactly. Playing against them. that Without would be, evil, there'd be no good. Right. Wouldn't you want to – who would you rather beat if you're, if you're the San Francisco Giants than the New York Yankees? In the World Series. That's what we're talking They've about. They've already won three of those in six years. Oh, yeah, and the Yankees have won, what, 26? I don't know. I don't care about no Yankees. <laughs> yeah. We're moving over into the first appearances still, and we got Justice League number 54 gives us that first appearance of Mindbender. 
Yeah, and Justice League is another series where there's been a, a number of first appearances, and it's hard to judge which ones are, say, important and which ones are. I'm still waiting for, like, Perpetua to pay off, and some, some of the older ones that have certainly gotten a lot of run uh, throughout the Justice League series. But um, this is an issue where there's a, there was a lot of uh, kind of buzz going into this one, um, and uh, some people say this is a first appearance. Some people say second cameo first full you're going to get all of that kind of debate going on um with this book but either way it was on a lot of people's radar was one people were talking about not one i like as much as some of the ones we've already discussed then the last one for first appearance is we're getting over that idw with that back to the future transformers number one this one has first appearance but what we always like about this series is they always come out with a toy for it right Right, so that's where I'm confused with these first appearances, these these crossover ones. I don't know how to feel about them. Nobody's buying, say, cover A for the first appearance. But I look at these characters, like uh, the character that was created with the Ghostbuster series, um, and then um, they, they created a new one here, uh, Gigawatt, uh, who is a brand new character for the, that's a DeLorean Transformer. And, that toy's uh, hot. Yeah, the, the toys are always red hot. Uh, the toy market immediately jumps on the, these crossovers, right? They're all about them. So we've seen them with, we've seen them, like we said, with Ghostbusters. Now we've seen it with Back to the Future. Um, they are all on board, no questions asked. Uh, the question kind of becomes, will the comic market jump on board? It's interesting that the 125 toy photo variant is the one that's doing the best. Now, part of that is because we've discussed IDW, especially on books that get overlooked. Those 125 incentives, they're usually gold. Having said that, um, you know, there were some other ones that got released. This was a heavy week for IDW. If you're an IDW fan, you're looking at like um, Snake Eyes Dead Game number two with that awesome red uh, Cobra uh, uh, Snake Eyes cover from Liefeld. You're looking at uh, brand new Sonic the Hedgehog miniseries focused Plus, on the if villains. you're watching this Thursday night when it premieres, they just launched their New York Comic Con variants today. Right, right. So there's, uh, you know, there's a, a, a lot, of, there was a lot to be excited about with IDW. Um, and I think this one could kind of get overlooked. But this to me, have this toy photo variant tying into the toy, I think toy collectors will love it. Um, what is the long term value, though, of these crossover Transformers? Probably not much unless the Transformers series was to, at some point, integrate these characters into maybe like the main continuity, which I don't know how that would work licensing wise. I don't know if, if that would ever work. But if there was some sort of language in the contract where um, the ownership was retained by IDW or, or by Hasbro, the, the manufacturer of the toys, then yeah, you could then take that and put that into the toy series, no problem. That's going to do us for first appearance section. Now we're going to get into those Reader Buzz books. King of Reader Buzz. A lot of people probably had this on their pool list or definitely went and picked it up this week. And we're talking about Thor issue number eight. Yeah, with you looking at the regular cover, the Nick Klein variant, this is a really a plug and play. Um, I also have got to love those uh, Alex Ross uh, variants that mural he did. Well, that features all of these kind of variant headshots. It's absolutely amazing in the Marvel offices. Um, but you know, Thor is definitely one of those plug and play releases that we're going to be talking about on a regular basis on the Bolo show at this point, because the heat on the series is real. And this is one that, like you mentioned, I think you can grab two or three copies on the same lottery ticket thing, even with no first appearance, because the, the buzz for this entire run is that kind of hot. But this next one we're talking about isn't a title we talk about too often on here, but it's got reader buzz this week. So we're talking about Amazing Spider-Man number 49. Right. Well, this is the 850th issue. So you get kind of a um, landmark issue, a uh, large issue. Uh, it's uh, like a $9.99 cover price issue. Um, but also this return of Green Goblin has been a big story. That's what I'm saying. Like I haven't read ASM. I've been kind of like totally turned off by the series for a while. Um, and I'm excited to ch check this storyline out because it's been getting some buzz and see. Again, let us know in the comment section if ASM has been delivering for you. Um, but uh there's some variants that were very popular. They did a lot of variants for this, uh, you know, Scotty Young, but the one that kind of stood out as getting kind of, not necessarily secondary market buzz, it's, it's selling for about cover price on the secondary market, but it's been posted a lot on social media, which again, 
is the crux of what the Bolo Show is all about. It's what you guys are talking about on social media is that Bruce Tim variant. Uh, and that variant has been, I've seen a million times posted at this point. So it seems like a lot of people are picking that one up. So that may be one to be on the lookout for long-term because that's how I like to gauge uh, long-term variant success is if people are all over it on release day, even if it's not going for a lot of money, um, but everybody's buying it, everybody wants it. If everybody wants it in the PC, they're going to grab it. They're going to keep it. Um, that's going to take a copy off the market. It's going to make it more and more scarce. I want to see an amazing Spider-Man Archie crossover. That would be great. It seems it's much more logical than uh, of being the fact that obviously it's two kind of like square teenagers. Yeah. Uh, and Perfect teen book. Punisher. Yeah. <laughs> Next one, though, on the reader buzz is we get that American Ronin issue number one this week. Yeah, this I, everything Ronin's popular now, right? Yeah. Everybody, everybody's talking Ronin. Damn this. Robert De Niro, I tell you. <laughs> Ronin this and Ronin that. Um, so this is one of those Price things. Price of Ronin. Where, it fits right in. But also, um, much like the, the next book we're going to talk about, the AWA Upshot is kind of – it's hit up level with the comic market where they'll – they'll give any book they release at this point a chance. Um, and we've heard it said before, it, it, you know, it, if you're a reader, I think you're getting some great stories because they you have got awesome some, creative teams on their books, right? Major creative teams. But if you're, if you're an investor, I think this is an even better brand for independent comic investing um, than it is even a reader buzz uh, brand, because we've heard it said before, this is not a comic company. This is a movie pitch company. They are creating stories uh, by creators with the direct intention of pick, pitching these. Now, what the success is, but I mean, with Axel Alonso at the helm, this is the man who led Marvel for so many years. Um, it's, it tends to bode well for them, and they've had some early success. There's been some talk about some, early, some of the early properties. So whether it's American Ronin or the, or the Prisoners, number one, um, I think that they're going to continue to get that kind of buzz on their books. So I'm grabbing all of their number ones at this point, even if it's a book that doesn't necessarily stand out and interest me. And I think a lot of other people in the comic market are doing that as well. But the next one, getting back over to IDW. IDW has been killing it with some of their Star Wars books, and they just relaunched Star Wars Adventures, Volume 2, Number 1. Yeah, completely under the radar, though. Yeah, um, that Frank Avila cover is freaking awesome. It, it is, but nobody's talking about this book. Um, the, the Clone War, uh, the, the, the Battle Tales story did well, got a lot of attention. Vader Castle got a lot of attention. Um, we know that the upcoming The Child one-shot is certainly going to get uber attention but what isn't getting attention seems to be this series but that may be something to pay attention to this is a release week where we're talking about a number of major series we're talking about a lot of number ones we're talking about a lot of books that stores ordered heavy we're talking about a lot of books that stores ordered exclusives for which tends to cut down other books that they're doing this may be a book that gets overlooked and these incentives may be ones to be on the lookout for your natural tendency would be to think kind of an IDW, all ages, Star Wars books, some of their incentives have tended to get overprinted. Um, it's tended to be later in the series when you kind of catch catch retailers off guard where some of these end up popping off. Um, you may get that right here with number one. But either way, these stories have been fun. Um, and again, we've promoted this all the time. These IDW, all ages series, they are what they say they are. They are all ages. That does not mean they are children's books. You will enjoy them. Um, you will still get the same kind of Star Wars feel. Uh, if there's maybe just, you know, um, less language violence, that kind of direct thing, but it's still very, very Star Wars. Yeah, and this next one we get into, we've, we haven't talked about this title on this list in quite a while. I've talked about it on three up, three down, both up and down, but we got that Walking Dead Deluxe number one that came out today. This was literally my long-term play, and I deleted it for the pick that I ended up putting it in instead. Um, and it's one of those things where I still stand by this as a long-term play. I love this book. Um, I think this is a big deal. First off, Brian and I have been very bullish on The Walking Dead as just a piece of culture at this point, um, and that it's going to last. I will tell you this. like People watching this, the viewers watching this might now might be like, oh, Walking Dead, oh, another Walking Dead number one. But all those skybound walking dead those facebook groups if you looked on any of those today everyone on there was super excited picked up like multiple covers so this book might not fit your niche 
but it's still one of those ones like Jack is talking about where it's a great pickup nonetheless. Yeah, it's a home run with Walking Dead fans. It's a home run with those, yeah, like you mentioned, those skybound image homers. Um, it, it, it's Again, it's a monumental moment because this is the biggest book maybe that Image has ever released. Um, certainly, maybe the biggest independent comic book. Um, when I say biggest, I maybe mean most important. I mean, let's be honest, we're all talking about what's the next Walking Dead. Um, it, it kind of changed the game. A lot of these TV shows that are getting made now are being made because of The Walking Dead and its success. But Brian and I have speculated that this is going to have pop, this property is going to have popularity for a lifetime between spinoff series, new movies, as well as most importantly, a new generation discovering the show via streaming platforms, which are the way of the future. Um, use a property like The Office for an example, which my children are getting into, which has you know, been off the air long before, yeah. uh, you That's know, like my kids watching watch, the Simpsons. Watch. Yeah, exactly. My kids have gotten into the Simpsons recently as well. Um, which is just, you know, it's mind blowing. Um, my kids but, tried to get in the family guy and I was like, Whoa, turn that shit yeah. off. <laughs> slow down, slow down. That's <laughs> one step at a time. We, I, we still remember when the Simpsons was kind of risque, but family guy's a whole different thing. Yeah. My parents wouldn't let me watch the Simpsons in living color or married with children, but yep. you know, so yeah, so you yeah. mentioned it. A number of covers, um, another blank, which I, I think the blanks are valuable. They dry up. People actually get sketches done by their favorite artists. Um, and again, another opportunity for unique artists to, to put their spin on it. What will be interesting about this one, Brian, is since they're doing every issue in the series, when we're on issue 50, how many issue number ones are going to exist out there anymore for cover price? My speculation is none. My speculation is by the time we are two years into this program, on issue 24, you're not going to be able to find issue number one regularly because of exactly what you said. The, the diehard fans of this are buying this up. They're buying multiple covers. They're buying multiple copies. They're going to get graded copies. They're going to get signed copies, and this thing is going to disappear regardless of the ridiculously high number that it will probably do in sales. But next book on Reader Buzz, we're getting over to Boom with Waff Twitted. I'm kidding. We only find them when they're dead. Number two came out this week. Yeah, my, probably my, honestly, I love Al Ewing. I love Boom Studios. I love everybody over there. Um, this is my <laughs> least favorite title in all of comics. Not, not book. I love this book. The physical title is far too long to try to work into like social media, graphics, YouTube stuff. Um, it, yeah, yeah, waff twitted. <laughs> yeah, it's you can't you're, you can't even come up with an abbreviation that doesn't make someone sit there and go, "What the hell am I looking at?" But either way, this is a monster issue. Number two is awesome. Another great issue. Another. This is a big book. Um, I love Seven Secrets, but I have no problem saying that definitely the market is jumping more on this book. Um, and we've talked about the first look deal at Netflix and the fact that Netflix wants its own Star Wars. And this plays kind of right into that. This book is sold out, going to a second printed, as already announced by Boom Studios. Be on the lookout for this one. If you're not reading this series, be sure to check it out. Second print cover is fire, too. Absolute fire. Um, again, and if you haven't checked out number one, make sure you, you grab it, you check it out. Um, and if you're looking for copies, we've got copies of just about every cover available on SimplemansComics.com. The last one we're talking about in the reader buzz is Spy Island number two. This is one where like the first issue, the second print hit FOC the same time as the first print. And a lot of people are buying those up, but there's still reader buzz for this. Number one, sold out. Number one, second print, sold out. Number two, cover A and B, sold out. This book is a monster. People love this book. People are grabbing it. Um, so it was kind of like a late edition. I think people overlook it. People forget it, um, including myself. But it, I think that this is one that people are jumping on board for. It reminds me of, um, what was that Joelle Jones book? Uh, the Housewife with the, <laughs> the knife. Oh, uh, Lady Killer? Yeah, it reminds me of Lady Killer. Not all there tonight. But either way, that were, as in sales, not as in the story, <laughs> the way the book's selling. Yep. But that's going to wrap up the reader bus. We're going to get over into our long, extensive variant buzz section. And 
totally lied there. We only have one this week on the variant buzz. Others that we covered previously in the list, but we are talking about that Venom number 27, that third print. Yeah, I mean, again, plug and play. These Venom late printings are money. Um, everything within this story has been money. Um, everything related to Dylan and his uh, uh, kind of uh, reveal within this issue has been money. Um, so the, these I'm grabbing. I'm grabbing all of these uh, Venom late printings as they come out. And I think most of the market is as well. But again, this was a busy release week. So this could have been under order. This could have slipped past people. So we've gone through the first appearances, we've gone through Reader Buzz, we've got the variant buzz, which leaves us with Jack's long-term play. This is a book that we discussed a little bit earlier, especially in that first appearance section, but Jack has champions number one. Why is that your long-term play this week? Well, because Brian, I never back down. Look, we had the last volume of champions number one as a long-term play, right? We had outlawed number one as a long-term play. I'm just tripling down on that same belief that these properties are money long-term. And I'm putting this volume of champions and it's tying to outlawed as my long-term play. You've also got that great first appearance, like I mentioned earlier, of Cradle, um, the team that's kind of in charge of catching these teenage superheroes. I am extremely bullish on these characters. We've talked about it. Um, Marvel and all of their marketing, I mean, just about every bit of marketing that they have done has tied in these champions characters, and not just tied them in. A lot of times they have been the driving force of the marketing. We're talking about specifically Camilla Khan, Miss Marvel, um, Miles Morales, Spider-Man, and Sam Alexander, Nova, those three characters, but also looking at Riri Williams, um, looking at the third power man, um, uh, certainly there's a number of other characters from Braun to Gwenpool to Dust um, that you can start going down the line of characters that I think are going to really have value and people are going to be paying attention to. But um, when you start to see someone like a Miles Morales and a Camilla Khan, and we already know that these are A-list players in the way it, Marvel hasn't given up on this, right? I mean, we're, we're how many volumes into this now? Um, I think this is the fourth. And they, they continue to try to get this formula correct. They continue to market these characters, not just individually, but together. Um, and then now having this outlawed story that sort of ties not just individual series into the Champions series, something they haven't done, um, but it also gave them an individualized one shot. And, you know, Variant buzz sometimes is, is very different from reader buzz. Sometimes it's very different from speculative buzz. It can truly just be almost art speculation. And it's easy to tie the outlawed number one variant sales into that kind of thing. But the fact that it's now just about every variant cover for outlawed number one is a monster. We can basically call the outlawed number one long-term play a win already. Even if you want to give me an L on the first uh, long-term play of Champions, again, that's the beauty of the long-term play. We believe in the long-term, Champions is going to be something. I'm going to keep putting them in this position. I'm going to keep believing in them. And this time, unlike last time where maybe people were a little bit more slow and you know, reticent to get on board, they're jumping on board, Brian. Even Cover A is selling out at large retailer. It's not going above cover price yet, but I think the key word is yet. In that Moco book, one in 50, already on fire, doing $140 on eBay. That's going to wrap up the Bolo show for this week. Let us know in the comments what books did you guys pick up? Did you pick up any books on this list? Did you pick up any books that weren't on this list? You guys create that reader buzz. That's what makes that list. With that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack with Submens Comics. If I keep we'll see you guys in the next the video. Because one day we hit, uh -huh. one day we ain't, uh -huh. one day we move it, and then the next day we can't. Feel like I'm losing my grip. Hide, I get stuck in this space.